The Cleveland Browns have a guy that's been there for a minute, and he is a sneaky talent that is absolutely emerging and finally starting to get credit for it. Hey, if you're new to this channel, a couple things. We're almost to 15,000 subs. Who knows? We might be there by the time you're seeing this. We would love to get there, so hit that subscribe button. Um, we haven't hid this. We are your neighbors from the north. We're Detroit Lions fans, but we started this channel loving to cover teams that the national media ignores. We get you, Browns fans. We get you. We have been in similar states, and now we have both experienced some success this year. The only difference is that the Lions seem to be getting all this love from the national media, and the Cleveland Browns continue to not which I don't understand. Like to me, it tells me if you're winning without a quarterback, like you did last year, it tells me your team has even more talent than other teams. But for some reason, people are acting like you you don't. And another talent has emerged. And I love when people do this and they dive deeper. Sometimes you need to dive deeper into, um, a player to understand exactly what they are good at. All right. So let's look at this under DC, Joe Woods, Brown's defensive backs were often out of place and seemed to be in the wrong scheme for their skill set. Whether it's Denzel Ward, remember that awful year he seemed to have? Yeah, not on him. Greg Newsome or Martin Emerson Jr. And even players like Greedy Williams before that. GM Andrew Barry seemed to dra draft press man corners to play in Woods' zone oriented scheme. That's an obvious problem. However, Schwartz changed all that because he likes to have an aggressive nature. And oftentimes, it is easier to play man and especially press man if you are going to blitz. That's kind of what he does. All right, according to PFF, Newsom, all right, was graded the best, or I'm sorry, the sixth best in press coverage. All right, but he's not the only person we're going to talk to. All right, um, because it went on to talk about Emerson, who was number one. It says, moreover, Emerson is a killer in press coverage. It says it right here. All right, a killer in press coverage. He was in press on 139 of his 943 snaps last season. And when targeted in press, he allowed eight catches on 26 targets for 4.2 yards per catch. Three explosive plays, no touchdowns, no picks, but a lot of disappointed receivers. Not a lot of people are talking about Emerson as an emerging star at a national level, and it's time for that to change. Thank you. Let's talk about some Cleveland Browns in a positive light. All right, so here's the thing about Emerson. The Cleveland Browns consistently rolled out what might be the best trio. I didn't say the best duo. I didn't say they had the best corner in the league. But they had a trio of corners that are all starting caliber corners. And I think Jim Schwartz utilized them fairly well. And I think he can utilize them even better. The big bugaboo for the Cleveland Browns last year was that they gave up explosive plays. And I understand when you're going to be in press coverage. I understand when you're going to be aggressive with blitzes and things like that. That's going to happen. I get it. I think what you can do is you can play some more man coverage, some more even press man, and have a shell over the top and let your phenomenal defensive line bring the pressure. You don't need to bring extra pressure in from other places. And you can shut down the middle of the field. All right. This is a team that absolutely has the talent to do it. So first we're going to look at it from um, just a depth chart, depth chart standpoint. And then we're going to look at it of were they used effectively or, or not. So when you look at this roster, if you look at this far left side, this is your defense. You have Zadarius Smith and Miles Garrett on the edges. All right. That's phenomenal. All right, that is phenomenal. And then you have a couple of guys, you have multiple guys, whether it's Mo Hurst back here, whether it's hopefully Mike Hall, whether it's Delvin Tomlinson, these are guys that can find ways to get pressure up the middle. All right, and then obviously Jeremiah Wusukoromoa can as well. But my belief is that you can have your three corners, all right, you can have your three corners, Denzel Ward, Martin Emerson Jr., and Greg Newsom. You can have those guys on the field and passing downs, and you can rush four, maybe five, all right? And you can get to the quarterback. You can get to the quarterback. 
And you don't need to send extra guys. Allow your corners to play in man and allow there to be some help over the top. You are going to have a ton of success. The question is, how often did that happen? Was there some zone and things like that? We know that in press man, he had an extremely high coverage grade. All right? But overall, Emerson's coverage grade was a 63.6. Not that great. All right, he had 566 coverage snaps. Of those, only, I don't know, I'm trying to do quick math here. Only 20% of those were impressed man. Now, you can't be impressed man all the time. I get that. But if you have a guy that's showing and proving he can be impressed man, let him work. Let him cook. All right, Newsom was also mentioned in that first thing being used well. So if he's ranked 66th overall in PFF, but he is the best guy in press man, and Newsom is 55th overall, but he is the sixth best in press man, according to that article, it's time to put them in press man. I understand you're going to give up some bigger plays. I get that. I get that. All right, but at the same time, there's going to be a lot of three and outs, and there's going to be a lot of turnovers forced. That's the way that goes. All right, and it's not like there's nothing behind them. All right, with Delpit, Thornhill, and Hickman, like you have players behind them that can absolutely be good in coverage that can give support over the top. So this is kind of just what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about how the Cleveland Browns have a very solid defense. We know they've had a solid defense. This defense is going to be what this team rides. I think they have more firepower. And here's what I'm here to say about the Browns, and I'll be tooting this horn all summer. All summer I'll be tooting this horn. All right? The Browns are good enough where if if their quarterback, Deshaun Watson is just the 20th best quarterback in the league, they can still go 10 and 7. They can because they have the defense that's good enough. They have an offensive line that's good enough. They have weapons that are good enough in order to surround him. He just can't make mistakes. All right. They prove that they can win when you don't have an elite quarterback. Joe Flacco, don't get me wrong, dude was making plays, also making tons of mistakes. I think sometimes we forget the fact that he was throwing, on average, almost two picks a game in the games that he played for you, all right? I also think it was a big mistake to sit all of them when they didn't have a lot of time together to sit them all for the final regular season game. But I understand you want them healthy, especially when you look at what happened to the 49ers the year before in the playoffs. I do understand that. But Deshaun Watson does not have to be Deshaun Watson of Houston because this defense can be that good. The question is, will Schwartz utilize it well enough so that it's there? It seems to be, based on all the coaching changes in this offseason, offense is where the focus is. They are trying to fix the offense, and they are trying to have a continuation with the defense. This defense was very good last year. This defense was very good last year. Don't get me wrong. However, however, and this needs to be said, all right, they were tied for 13th in points allowed. Their PFF grade was 18th overall out of 32 teams. This is not the 18th or 13th most talented defense. This is a top five defense, and it needs to show that. In fact, the offense was tied for 10th in points scored, and the defense was tied for 13th in points allowed. Based on comparable statistics directly against competition, The offense, actually, they didn't grade out better, but they scored more. That's very interesting to me. All right. Thank you uh, for watching this, and uh, we hope to see you on the next one. Lots of Browns content coming all summer long. See ya.